All right, here is the project we're doing on this video. This is the Lucky Stars plaque from Patricia Rawlinson's website. It is www.creativeartslifestyle.com. Lucky Stars plaque. Um, let's see. I don't know if she has more than one. This one's a 9x14. Um, very fun, fun plaque to paint on. So um, this was a fun project. I can't wait to show you how to do it. Let's get started. All right, let's get started on this project. I have just marked off just a little bit below the um, biggest star. These two, these two stars are the biggest one. So it's going to be rough, kind of rough to say where it is. You're just going to have to kind of be the judge because it has this curved edge. So I can't really give you an exact measurement here. Um, I could give you a measurement of the center, I guess. We've got about eight and a half inches in the center, so if that helps in any way, I say just go just a little bit past the star. Mine probably won't be exactly the same on each side, and I'm not going to worry about it because you won't really notice that unless you're way, way off. So we're going to tape this off. Now you want to put sealer on your, your uh, piece first. So get a coat, get a coat of sealer on it first, and then I'm just using scotch tape and taping off on these lines I drew here. Press it down. All right, we're going to be painting this with this particular tool. I want to paint this side blue, and I'm going to paint it um, true blue. And I don't want you to have to get a whole lot of colors out. I already feel like this project's going to have a, a few colors, so I'm going to when I want to do some I got paint all over me. When I want to do some uh, shading on this blue, I'm just going to add a little bit of black to it. Um, it's good if you can um, learn how to kind of mix your paint so that you don't have to have such a huge variety of colors. It's always good to have those colors, but um, if you don't have it and you're something you just really want to paint and it's just a, a darker shade, you know, for floating, a lot of times you can add black to your base color and get a nice shading color and you can add white to it to get a, a lighter highlight color and then, um, you know, darken from there and, and lighten from there. So I am going to um, dip this into some water. I like for my sponges to be damp. I think it makes it so much easier for them to clean when the, when the sponge is damp. I mean, you can still throw it in your water if you can't get to clean it right away. I, I always try to go and clean mine right away because it doesn't matter which side I do. I really didn't need to flip that over. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to paint one side of this blue, the true blue, and we're going to paint the other side um, white. I've got a couple of these uh, tools here, so um, you can use makeup sponges to do this. You can brush it on. You can use an artist sponge. Whatever, um, whatever way that you can, can get this paint on here and be happy with it, then you can use that that particular tool. I like to recommend the tools that I use, but you don't always have to use them if you've got, you know, if you don't have them or if you've got something else that will work just as well, then do that. Okay, I need to get right up to my tape line here. Okay, and I'll probably put a second coat on that. So on this side, we're going to paint it with, oh, let's paint it with warm white. I was going to do snow white, but I think I'll do warm white. So let me get another one of my ink sweepers here. Now these ink sweepers, you can get them at Hobby Lobby. I've, I've got one of mine at Hobby Lobby and one I got at Patricia Ronson's website, creativeartslifestyle.com. Probably any place online or in your town that sells scrapbooking 
stuff will have them because they're mostly used for scrapbooking. So I will go off camera and put my second coats on because you don't necessarily have to see me do all this base coating stuff. So I'm just showing you how we're getting started here. There may be some of you watching that haven't ever painted before and you know you need all the detail painting steps that you can get and others of you you can just zip right through this part. Okay now this plaque here before I go off camera and, and paint those second coats on there this is from Patricia Rawlinson's website um, can't remember the name of it I had a sticker for it oh here it is <clears throat> this is her Lucky Stars plaque it's a 9 by 14 inch plaque. You can paint both sides. You can hook wire in the stars and hang it up. You can set it in a plaque. You can hang it from nails. Um, whatever. It's just a very versatile, very cool plaque. And uh, you can do lots of things with it. You can paint the other side something completely different that could go this direction instead of this direction. So I love painting on plaques because they're so versatile and you can, you can do both sides and do so many things with them. So uh, I'm going to go get my second coats on, then we're going to come back and keep moving on this project. Okay, before I take the tape off, I want to do a little bit of shading and highlighting on this one. So I've got my uh, ink sweeper here. I'm going to pick up a little bit of blue on one end of it, tiny little bit of black, and blend that in just by tapping it on my palette. A little bit more blue. don't want it to be quite so black. Now I'm just going to come along and tap this along this edge right here. And tap a little shading in there. Just all along that taped edge. Mix a tiny bit more. Come in here and tap along this edge. This is going to give that some nice shading along there. Very quick, very easy to do. I go a little bit into my blue here and kind of blend that in there a little bit. I think I might bring that shading up a little bit more. I want it to be a little bit higher. So I'm going to mix a little bit more of this. I think I'm going to spritz some water on my surface here. Just on this end. Just a little spritz of water. Mix a little bit here. And then I'm just going to tap this on here and bring that now you can do this with a brush, you can do it with a sponge. I just want to bring that up a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to take the other end and get a little bit of white on there. Mix that with a little bit of blue. Flip this around because it will be easier to do this way. And I'm going to tap a little highlight on this edge. Just a little bit. Need a little bit of water. Spritz, spritz. I held my water bottle way up high because I just wanted a little misting of water. That looks really nice. We'll go ahead and remove the tape on this blue end. We're going to come back in and do some more to those stars, but we got to let that blue paint dry there. So on the white end over here, I'm going to uh, go off camera and mark my lines up, off on here so that we can paint our red stripes on here. Okay, I got my uh, lines drawn on here. I drew a line at three quarters of an inch and I marked it on my tape every three quarters of an inch and then I took my T-square 
trying to keep it as straight as I could against that tape and drew my lines. That's the only way I could figure out how to get those lines straight. Okay, so now we're going to paint our stripes. We're going to paint our red ones. So I want to mark off for my red stripes. like the tape is just gonna fit so what do you know tape is three quarters of an inch wide that works out very nicely I had no idea I need to add a little piece on this one so we're going to tape these off, and then the ones that are not taped, we're going to use a makeup sponge. Now you can use a brush. Um, let's see, I didn't get that mark very straight, so I will come back and erase that one. That line right there, as best I can. I may have to paint this this back over with. I tried to make my lines before and messed them up big time. So I'll paint these in and then if I have any areas that need um, touching up I can come back and touch those up with a brush. So I'm just going to use a makeup sponge. We're going to use Tuscan Red. So makeup sponges are not very absorbent so they won't hold paint like those other sponges will. So we just want to we want to pull some out and tap our sponge in it and kind of work it work it into that makeup sponge. Don't drench the makeup sponge. And then we're just going to come in here and tap in our red stripes and we will do two coats of this red. So I will go off camera and do that. And then we'll come back and do a little bit of shading on these red ones while we have them taped off. So I will be back as soon as I get my two coats of red on here. Okay, I've got my two coats of red on there. I'm going to spritz some water on my palette this time. I'm going to take that same makeup sponge. I'm going to dip a little bit of black on there and go into some red. And get a darker red here. Get a little bit of water on my sponge. And then we're going to tap this in at the back here. Next to our long line of tape. A little bit of water. That'll give us a little bit of just a touch more black here. Water. Darken these down here. They aren't quite as dark as that one up at the top. Okay, so I'm going to go to the other side of the sponge and put some white out here because I don't have any left. And I really don't want that to mix with my red because I don't really want pink on there. So I think I will just, I don't even know if I want a highlight out there. Um, no, I think I'm going to leave the highlight off. I don't think I want a highlight out there. So let's remove our tape here. that looks really nice. So we've got our blue at one end and our red and white stripes at the other. We've already done our shading here. We've done our highlighting over here. So these ends are done. We want to make sure they get completely dry and then we're going to tape them off and paint the inside of our um, project. Now I was going to come back with some white and outline the stars here but I don't think I'm going to. I like it just like this. I think that looks just beautiful just like that. So we're going to leave it just like this and get it dry and get ready to start on our center. 
Okay, let's work on this project a little bit more. I um, started this project yesterday, and now um, it's going to take a completely different turn than what I originally had. I never know when I start painting something, you know, how it will go. I don't know where the vision is going to take me, so that's just my process. So I love how the ends of this turned out. So I'm going to do something different in the center than I originally planned. So, I've got, these are completely dry. They are good and dry. Because it's been a day since I worked on this. So, they are good and dry. Um, you want to make sure they're good and dry before you tape them off. So, we're going to tape off on this side this time. Right up to the line that we painted. I lightly sanded the um, areas. I don't want to go past what I've painted. I can come in a little bit on it. It's fine, but I don't want the tape to go past it because I don't want to have to try and fill any kind of gaps in there. Take this side off. We're just using scotch tape. You don't have to have any kind of heavy duty tape to do this. long enough. Actually, I could have stuck over that side a little bit, so I could have just moved it up a little bit. Okay, so we've got our tape on there. I want to make sure it's down good on that edge. Okay, so we're going to get a two-inch foam roller to do this next step. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to dampen my roller because I like my rollers and my sponges and all that stuff. I like them to be damp. So I've just kind of stuck it down in my water and let it kind of fill up with water. Now I'm going to take all, squeeze all the excess water out of it. I don't want any drippiness. So it's just damp. Okay. We're going to paint the background here. So we're going to get our true blue out. Put that on our palette. Move this over here so we can see what I'm doing. I'm going to squeeze some true blue out. I'm going to mix a little bit of white with it. Warm white, which seems to be stuck in my bottle for some reason. There it is. So we've got about two blue to one white. I don't know if I'm going to use all that white. I also want to have a little puddle of white over here by itself. And a little bit of black. And I will have to have a little bit of blue by itself as well. So these are the colors we're going to be using. So I've kind of got them all spread out on my palette here. I'm going to mix these two. So I've got probably two white, uh, well, two blue to one white, I would say. So I'm going to take half of that. So it's going to be two blues and half of that white that I put out there. So you want to put out that much, and we're going to make just a little bit lighter blue here. I'll pull that down. Actually, I need to make a quite a bit, quite a bit more than that, because <laughs> I'm going to use that with my roller. If I was just brushing something on, then that would be a good amount. But I'm going to be using this particular color with my roller. So let me pull it down here a little bit. Okay, that's got us a really pretty medium blue there. Now we're going to take our roller and load it up here. And we're going to paint this in the center. Make sure I don't have any paint on my hands that I'm going to transfer. And just go right up and over your tape there. 
I'm going to apply two coats of this. So I will quickly get this dry and I will have to mix up a little bit more. Not a whole lot more because I still got quite a bit in this roller so surface there. So I'm letting off the pressure a little bit here and letting the, the roller just kind of smooth across that surface so I don't have so much texture. When you're using a roller you can get a lot of texture. Okay I'm gonna get that dry so we can get our second coat on. Alright getting ready to apply my second coat. I want to lightly miss that with some water. And put my second coat on here. Alright, I'm going to lightly miss this again, and then I'm going to get me a filbert brush, and I'm going to pick up some white and start working this into the background back here. I want this to be pretty bright through here. some of my mixed color and blend that in. Don't go past your tape. More white. Okay, I'm going to wipe the excess paint off so I can just start slip slap blending this. Just take it out. Seems dry on this edge. Okay, you want that brightest, brightest area in the center. You know, when you're doing this particular technique, <laughs> it looks pretty bad until it gets dry. But um, just go with the process here. It will look really good when we get it done. I just keep picking up white and adding a little bit of a little bit more brightness. Now I'm gonna wipe my my uh, brush off, pick up some of the based color. Do not go past your tape. That's very important <laughs> to not stroke past your paint your tape. Okay. Very softly on the brush just Letting that to kind of blend out a little bit of water. I'm going to put some water on my brush this time. I need a little bit darker color here. Very lightly. Tickle, tickle, tickle. Okay, down here I want it to be darker. So I'm going to miss that. And I'm going to take my blue. And I'm going to go into a little bit of black. I want to darken that blue. Kind of like we did out there when we did the shading. And I want this down here at the bottom. Okay, I'm going to wipe the excess off my brush. Pick up a little bit of white. Blend that in here. Wipe off the excess. I've got a little bit of a glare, so I'm going to lift it up so I can see it a little bit better. Now I'm way back on the handle of my brush, just Xing it back and forth, tickling it across 
that wet paint. I have my ceiling fan on and it is drying this faster than I can tickle it. So let me mist it. I want this darker down here. Ooh, just about went past my tape there. Be careful when you're doing the tickling part. You don't get past where you need to be. it. I can feel my paint getting dry and, and dragging there. It's starting to dry a little bit quicker than what I want it to, so keep it kind of damp. Alright, I'm going to wipe the excess off. Every time I pick up some of that white, I'm going to go wipe it off because I don't want that white to get down down in my dark area down here. Very, very gently. This is just a little tickle, tickle, tickle. I probably could have backed the camera out a little bit so you could stay on camera. I think I'm about done with this because I feel like I'm just creating a little bit of a mess here. I'm going to mop this because I keep pulling the paint up. Now you have to be very careful when you're mopping. Tickle it very gently. You don't want to remove the paint. You just want to smooth it out a little bit. Okay, so I think we're going to leave it right there in that place. Okay, I'm going to remove the tape because we're done with the background. And hopefully I didn't make a mess over here. Looks like we did pretty good and kept all of our edges and I put the dark on the wrong side. <laughs> I wanted the dark to be down here on this side and I put it on this side so I've got it backwards. So I'm going to base coat mine. Make sure your blue is on the right side, or on the left side, when you're doing this. You want the dark color to be down at the bottom. So I am going to darken this down here and lighten this up here and smooth and blend them out. Oh boy, that's just me. That's what I get for taking a lunch break, huh? Okay, I've got my base coats on in the center, and after I got my base coats on, I see something that I completely want to change. So, hopefully you have been painting along with me, and you are watching the video and then going to go paint it. But, um, I think I want this end to be the same as this end, since I have blue in the center. So I'm going to paint this end to match this end, and I think it is going to completely change the look of this piece. So, um, I'm going to go get that done and see if I like it. Okay, so I painted this end to match this end. I like it so much better with that blue in the middle. Still has the um, Americana theme going on that I wanted to do. So I've got my uh, detail lines transferred on and we're ready to start working on the detail here. Okay, we're going to start working on our teddy bear now. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to use a, this is a Royal Majestic. This is a six, number six. It's a domed. It's very soft. The bristles are very soft. I'm going to use it dry. I've never painted a teddy bear before, so we will just see how this works. I'm going to go into my burnt umber, okay, and then I'm going to kind of work it into my dry brush a little bit. Work it up in there. Okay, I'm just going to tap on my palette or my paper towel, get any excess off. Now, we want to put this, um, I'm just going to kind of tap this in where we want our darker areas to be. Go back to that same spot and load, and then when I don't have any paint left there, I'll add a little more paint and work it into my brush. So I just pick it up, work it into my brush in a circular motion, just about all the paint is up in the brush. 
tap it on my paper towel and then just come over here and tap it in. We want to try and get this uh, teddy bear to look a little bit fluffy. So I thought this might get the result that I want. We shall see. Wherever uh, a dark area is, is where we want to put this. I just didn't want my bear to be smooth. So I thought I would give this technique a try and see. I don't even know if it is a technique, <clears throat> just something I thought I would try. Tap it in. Um, any kind of, a, I think a domed brush would work best, but if you don't have a domed brush, um, if you have a set of these uh, low Cornell brushes they might work they're they're a little bit flat though I, I feel like it needs to be rounded a more rounded um, brush and it's very very soft and it's not really like dry brushing because I'm not scrubbing it on here I'm just kind of tapping tapping it on there we will come back and do you know our regular floating and everything on here. So let's put a little bit over here. Put a little bit by the muzzle here. And the ears. It's a little bit harder with a bigger brush not to get it into your um the center of your ears, but it's okay. We can we can touch that up if it is anything that we don't like. Okay, I'm gonna come back in a few places and repeat that. So work it into your brush. Tap it on your paper towel. All right, I'm gonna go into the next color, which I have chosen is milk chocolate. And I'm going to work that into my dirty brush. Did not wash my brush out. And we'll start tapping some of this in. We can go right over our burnt umber there. Work it in your brush, tap it on your paper towel, and then we're just tapping it on here. and kind of mushing technical terms there. Just going to build this bear up a little bit at a time. Oh, my dog is stressing out. I don't know if you can hear her all panting behind me, but we are having some minor thunderstorms here and she does not like thunderstorms so she is getting a little bit stressed behind me she wants to crawl underneath my painting table that's where she likes to hide during storms okay I had to run and help my husband with something in the shop so I only have one of these brushes and I didn't want the paint to dry in it so I took my hand sanitizer and I cleaned it out completely and then uh, put it on a dry paper towel cleaned it out with the hand sanitizer and wiped it off with the paper towel. I'd do that three times to get all the paint out. There's still a little bit in it but it's, it's still soft. But the hand sanitizer will dry very quickly and evaporate so you don't have a damp brush to come back to because you don't want to wash it out. <coughs> so. Let me dirty my brush up again. I had a little bit of burnt umber and I went into some milk chocolate. Work that into my brush. I want to keep my, my brush as small as possible. Sometimes when you get it full of paint it starts um, 
the bristles start splaying out, so we don't want it to do that. Okay, let's go into some uh, cocoa now. Work it into my brush. When I'm when I'm working it into my brush, I'm not pushing down really hard on my brush. I'm kind of staying up on the bristles and letting that paint work into it. That way they won't get all bent out of shape. Alright, put a little bit of this on here. Work it down this way just a little bit. This is cocoa. My paint started getting a little dry while I was gone too. I should have put out fresh paint. A little bit, a little bit too much paint on my brush there. Or it wasn't worked in to create a softer little flow there. Right, let's put some of this up here. This is cocoa. A little bit more on my brush. I'm not going to worry too much about his ears. We'll just come in and float the ears and take care of that on the ears. Okay, let's get a tiny bit of burlap. Make sure you mix that with, with the cocoa that's on your brush. And if it seems really bright, then add a little bit more cocoa in your brush. And I'm barely tickling this color on here. Just a little little bit will do ya. Okay, we're getting him fuzzied up a little bit. Okay, I think I want to do a little bit more fuzzying up here. Take that burnt umber, add a tiny little bit of cocoa to it. I'm gonna really going to have to work that into my brush a couple of times because I have that um, uh, burlap in my brush. Let me get some fresh burnt umber and milk chocolate out. Work it in. On the tippy tippy. Got way too much paint in my brush there. Okay. My paint was like sopping, my brush was like sopping wet of paint. So if that happens to you, go wipe it out on your paper, dry place on your paper towel. And I just want a little bit more fluffiness in here. Just a touch more. Milk chocolate. So this will be a two-step process. We'll, we'll do it once, and then we'll come back and we'll repeat all these colors a second time. And each additional layer is really going to give this bear a little bit more fluffy look to it. looking very soft. All right, a little bit more cocoa out here. Oops. Work 
that into my brush. Get the excess off. Light touch. This is cocoa. She's looking like a fuzzy bear. Tiny little bit of burlap, work that in. Get the excess off, and then very lightly. We're just very lightly tapping some of this in here. Now, if you don't have one of these brushes or you do not want to do this particular technique, then you can just do your floating and shading, your highlighting and shading with your floats, and um, I think it will be all right. Okay. I think this bear is looking pretty darn cute here. So now I'm going to go ahead and wash my brush out because I feel like I am done with that part of my um, technique, at least for now. I mean, I can always come back later and when my brush is completely dry and rework that if I feel like it needs it. But for now, that's... Uh, that's what that's all of that technique we're going to do on the bear. We're going to get ready to do some shading on him now. All right, we're going to start um, floating some color on our bear now. So I've got burnt umber on my palette. I am going to mist the opposite side of my palette right here with some water. You can see all of my water drops. Now I'm using a curve flat. Currently, in the making of this video, I still have some sixes and tens available on my website. This is a size 10. You want to wake your brush up. Wake it up. I haven't worked on this project for several weeks, so I may have already showed, the, showed this earlier in the video. So I apologize if it is repetitive. <laughs> but we want to wake our brush, brushes up so we fill the bristles completely full of water. Let them just get nice and plump, all soaked up. Then you just lay, lay it on your palette this way and this way. That wicks out excess water dry your ferrule off, you're ready to go. All right, how I load my brush for floating is I dip the pointed toe, I call it the toe of the brush, into my uh, paint. Now I've got a lot of water. Let me zoom you in so you can see, maybe you can see that. I have a lot of, a lot of moisture right there. So I'm gonna lay my brush on my paper towel and let the excess water come out. And then I'm gonna go right back here and I'm going to continue to work my brush with this paint. Now I'm pushing a little bit hard. I want to get the, the paint up the bristles. I don't want them over super far, but uh, they can come over a little bit because we might have some wider floats in here. So I'm just going to work it in there. And then I'm going to start giving less pressure and let the paint soften in my brush. So how it looks right here, this gradation of color, that's how it's going to look when you paint onto your surface. It won't change from going um, from your palette paper to your surface unless you uh, let the paint dry in your brush. You go do something and the paint dries in your brush. So it's, it's going to stay just like that. So we want to float this burnt umber. I need just a touch more paint. Along all of our shading areas. I use the water over there to pick up on this edge when I need it and then I work it into my brush just like I do the paint. Go around this foot here. Okay, I'm going to load some more. We're going to float down here on this edge. If you have trouble with, with longer areas that you're floating, then you can 
lightly pre-dampen that but you want to have a little bit less water in in your brush not a lot less just a little bit and then you'll be able to move that paint a little bit farther your brush will tend to tell you if it needs more paint or more water or both so just learn to to know how your brush feels as you're painting with it and then it will it will guide you into what you need to do okay so more water more paint I picked up both I picked up water on this edge paint on this edge and now I'm working them in my brush have my ceiling fan on and my oscillating fan on behind me and I can already tell it is just sucking the moisture right out of my brush. So I am using a tad bit more water than I would normally use. So you can adjust for the circumstances wherever you're painting. Alright, let's go under the bow tie here. I need to touch my white up on my bow tie there. If you can lay your brush flat where you're you know, laying the paint for floating, it, uh, it will help. And give soft pressure. I'm going to go on this edge a little bit. down here. Okay, and then on this one. Okay, that should be dry now. I want to go around that Hand. This hand is folded over, holding the flag. Okay, let's go up here to the head. this side here. I really hope this bear turns out cute because like I said I've never painted a bear before. I'm not 100% sure what I'm doing so we get to learn this together. Go next to the, the fur there, the top of the head. I think I might bring a sable brown around his ear. Let me see if I'm even going to like that. I'm from a liner brush and I can't find it. So I'll use this one around here. Let's see if I want to bring the brown on around. Just edge it there a little bit. I think that'll be all right. I can take a little bit of this burnt umber, just a little bit, and brush some along that edge right there.
Okay, I want to go around where his eyes will be, so I want to make sure that's exactly where I want the eyes. shapes to match so okay that looks a little bit better so I want to work this color this burnt umber around those eyes Make more water have to work so hard to get my paint to come off my brush. That generally is telling you you need water. Across here. Kind of stipple on his muzzle here in a little bit like we did in the back you know on the bear itself all right let's do a little bit of burnt umber pretty good. That looks pretty good for our first little shading there. Right, let's start adding some hot, a little bit lighter colors on here. We're going to go with milk chocolate. Let's see how we're going to like this. Making too dark. Milk, cho milk chocolate can be a little bit transparent, so we'll start with that color. We're going to put it on all of our light edges, and because we we made we put our our we stippled kind of in our lighter colors here. This is going to keep that milk chocolate from being too dark. So just on all of our lighter edges here we'll put this milk chocolate Got a little bit of water mixed in with the paint, keeping it from being very bright. Use your water brush to soften and help move the paint. it out, soften it out. Okay, let me get this dry and then we're going to come back and add 
Let's see, our next color is going to be some cocoa. Alright, our next color on here will be cocoa. We'll do a little bit less of this. I'm going to add a tiny little bit of milk chocolate into my cocoa just to tone it down just a little bit. Water on my brush here, and then we're going to go in here and a little bit, a few places we can brighten up here. We won't cover all the areas that we covered before. Little guy, I'm gonna put this, keep this more central in his belly. Cocoa with just a touch of milk chocolate. More water. This is the color you will create your, your brightest areas on your bear. I think down here needs a little bit more and I definitely need water. I'm going to just kind of work it down, just a scooch there. That looks better. More water on my palette already dried up because my fan's blowing right on my palate. Probably not a good thing. Right, I'm going to repeat this here. Make it just a little bit lighter. Let me do his belly again. I think it needs to be a little bit brighter. Bring it over into this little belly. All right, let's go put some up on his ears. And some on his face. This is cocoa. I'm keep it mostly just on that side right there. Take the water edge and smooth it out as you apply it. Dry this because I need to repeat that one on his head right there. He's looking so cute. So cute. Okay, now the burlap. I'm a little bit nervous about the burlap. So I am definitely going to mix that with some cocoa to lighten it up. I'll start out with a one to one. And 
we're going to create some of the brightest areas here. This is a one-to-one -one mix of um, burlap and cocoa. Because I thought just the straight burlap would be just a little bit too bright. Try and keep your little guy fluffy. And you can do that by, as you float, kind of, you know, n not trying to make your float perfect, but by, you know, more tapping it in. Pity patting it. I want to bring that down into the leg just a little bit. They had too much water right there. Some on his belly belly. Okay, I'm keeping the water edge always to the outside so I can keep my the edges of my paint soft. I'm gonna mop that one. Bring it down just a touch here. Soften it. Got a dark line there. I don't want to see that dark line. Now I've got a hard light line on there, so I'm going to have to let that dry and come back and fix it. Alright, up here on the side of his head here. We'll keep it... Well, you'd probably like to be on camera, wouldn't you? Keep it right there on that edge. We'll go up here and put some on the ear. And fix his belly. Want him to stay as fluffy looking as possible. And you can't stay really too fluffy if you're if you're making smooth, you know, transitions with your paint. It's got to be a little bit pity patty. to darken on this side of his shading. Okay, let's darken with just the sheerest of floats of lamp black. So, with my lamp black, we're going to get it on a brush. I've got quite a bit of water in my brush, but I'm going to keep that water in there because I want this paint to, to really soften down. It's going to be almost like we're creating a glaze with our, our, our floating color, so it's going to have a lot of water in it. And we want to put this in our darkest areas, which is going to be back along here. 
this whole area here will be a little bit darker. Up on the toe of my brush here because it's a tap that and kind of settle it back down in there. Up around his foot here. We definitely want some soft black down in here. be up on the tippy toe here because I don't want to remove the paint that I just put on there. Okay, let's go down here on the bottom of his leg. I'm going to bring that up just a scooch more. that with my mop brush. Now I use my mop brush dry. And I go to a damp place on my paper towel and clean it off and then I go to a dry place and dry it off. You need to get in the habit of cleaning it whenever you use it so that you do not transfer. It doesn't get paint on the end of it on the bristles and transfer onto your project somewhere else when you go to use it again. So very important to clean as you go there. Remember, keep this, you know, a more sheer color so you'll have your water in there. You can always come back and repeat it, but if you get it too dark, it's going to be too difficult. I mean, you would, you would basically have to base coat over it and start over. Okay, let's darken this right here. Right here. Alright, let's do the back of his arm back here. And I'm going to kind of keep it more just on that back edge. I'm not going to bring it all the way down his arm. Go around his hand here. Try and soften that. I have a little bit too much paint there. A little bit more water so it won't be quite so dark. tapping back with my finger. It will get the same effect as a mop brush as long as you're not removing tons of paint. Okay, we'll go on the side here. A little bit more paint. I'm laying my brush flat, soft pressure. Up to that bow tie, I'm going to go around it. I'm up on my toe of the brush. I'm going to walk, pity pat that out. I want to kind of still keep that, you know, irregular looking. Do a little bit on the ears here. Or maybe a lot. That was quite a bit of paint there. Definitely need water now. Around his arm here. I need to brace this graphite line because it's really bugging me. Good. 
Let's go a little bit around his muzzle and his eyes. I think while I have this soft black, I want to create some almost like pucker lines around his eyes just by tapping the brush next to the um, where the eye and the muzzle are. Almost like crease lines, you know, if you were putting them on a face. So we'll start at the corner. Last place here. Let's go underneath the bow tie and up on the tippy tippy toe on this edge. Okay, I need to go touch up my um, bow tie there. a little bit here and give that rounded look. Okay, I think I'm going to go touch up my burlap here and on the face and on the ears and uh, we'll come back and finish on those colors. Okay, we've got our um, eyes and nose painted in with black. Now I want to put a little bit of um, some coloring in the ears here. <clears throat> and I'm just going to float that in with some Tuscan Red, but I'm going to thin it down, make it a little bit Sheer float. Put some more water on my palette. Everything's drying up. So I get a little bit of water. And just kind of work it in into my uh, brush where it's a nice soft, nice soft color there. And we can put this inside the ears here. Kind of work it up into the ear. I'm going to take the water edge of my brush and just kind of soften that out and then mop it right on there and that will remove some of it and we'll go over here and do this ear I'm just using a, a small little flat brush here so I'm going to take the water edge soften that out I have to do it while the paint is still wet the other one so let me try that again soften it and mop it right in there okay I want to add our stitching on here and I'm going to use a liner brush and we're going to add the stitching with burnt umber 
So thin your paint down a little bit so it will flow off of your brush and you can make your stitches as any size that you want. I don't like that one. some down the feet as well. Okay. I can get these graphite lines off of here. Put the uh, the lines on with a dressmaker's pencil so they just came off with clean water. Okay, so um, our next thing is to add a little bit of shading on our feet here. We're going to do that with some burnt umber. Burnt umber is a very, it's a more transparent brown so we can get a nice soft float very easily. Always come back and darken that, so I'm a firm believer in making the first float soft. And then you can always come back and darken. Because that will definitely need to be darker, but we don't want to get there too quickly. And then we'll also float here. to use my mop brush to soften. I just think it does a wonderful job for softening. Still got a graphite line here. I want to make sure I've got my graphite lines off before I put any paint on there because well a dressmaker's pencil will come off but if you're using graphite paper it won't won't come off near as easily. All right, I'm going to repeat with the burnt umber. And we mop that. Soften it. And come back down here and do this one again real quick. A little bit more paint on my brush this time. Lights on here. Um, let's get our burlap and some warm white. And we'll mix those together.
and I'll just do a one-to-one -one mix and see how that looks. <clears throat> if I get it on the nose because that's just black paint and I can come back and fix that. And we'll go down on the feet. Just across the tops of them. Put a little highlight. I'm going to go back up here to the nose and brighten it a little bit. And the cheeks up here, it should be dry. I'm going to put a little bit of this highlight inside the ears as well. Use the water edge of your brush to kind of pull that out and soften it. And I use my finger to kind of smooth the edge. Okay, let's go in the ears a little bit. Right inside here. Kind of blend that in. the water edge and kind of blend it. Don't want any hard lines. Blending it with the water edge will help you help keep from getting those hard lines. I think I need to shade down here one more time. I really want that to look rounded and right now it is not looking rounded. So let's see what I can do about that. my bow. The shape of that bow is what's kind of throwing me off there. Alright, I want to lighten one more time and I'm going to go with just warm white. We did uh, warm white and burlap and now we're, we're going to do just warm white. If you don't like having the um, paint over your stitch lines, then you can come back in and draw those stitch lines, paint those stitch lines back in. back in. We'll go in and do the ears. With their final highlight. Put a highlight in the nose and on the eyes. And I think we'll be mostly done with the bear except for the bow tie. This is just warm white. I'm going to kind of keep it at the very, I kept it right here at the very tip, the inside the ear, right there. Okay, I need to erase my graphite lines there. They're kind of starting to bug me. Alright, 
just making sure I don't have any more graphite lines that I need to erase there. While I have this brush, I'm going to... I can't remember what color I painted that stick in. So i got some burnt umber here. I probably did burnt umber and added a little bit of black to it, I bet. Which is the same as soft black, so... I'm going to do burnt umber with a little bit of soft black because soft black will make that burnt umber a little bit more opaque and I want this to stay a little bit more on the brown side. I'll take that right down into his hand. Okay. Let's see what place on his nose I missed. Let's put a highlight on his eyes. I'm going to go to my liner brush. I'm going to stay with the warm white. And I'm just going to put a little highlight a little bit on the nose. Okay, I think that finishes out our bear. I think he looks pretty cute. If you want him to look more textured, you can go in and stipple some of the colors that we used and make him look more textured, but I think he looks cute just like this. Okay, I think our little teddy bear looks really, really cute. Um, we're going to work on our stars next. So I want to work on all of the stars at the same time, so I'm going to do them on the flag and show you how to do them. And um, you'll do them all the same with antique gold and it will probably take two coats to cover up all of this blue so you just paint them in. You know the um, stars you used to make. I don't know if you ever made stars like this where you went up and down and across and over like that. That's all I'm doing when I'm painting it in and it will just fill in the center. Uh, I just stay up on the tip of my brush. I've got a um, I'm with a one round and you're just going to do that motion. You're making like actually making like two triangles. You're making a triangle up and down and then a triangle across and down and that fills in your stars nicely. So you're going to want to do two coats. On all of your stars, and we'll come back and add just a little bit of highlight on these stars. Okay, go over here and do these. So just follow your pattern. If it's if it's just a piece of a star, then just fill in those parts that are on there. Okay. Just whatever part is showing is the part you're going to paint. If you stay up on the very tip of your brush, you won't have any trouble making these stars. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to do the ones on the book, and then I'm going to go and do two coats on each one, and then we'll come back and add some stripes on here. All right, I've got all my gold stars painted in, so now I want to add just a little bit of cad yellow on the tips, the tops of the stars. Maybe if I can get it to come off my brush. There we go. Just a little, little, little bit. So just kind of brighten up the stars. You don't have to, you don't have to cover the whole thing. Just a little, little dabbing at the top. 
and then after you get these on go in and erase your graphite lines and there's one change that I made while I was painting this these yellow stars in it was over here this book I decided to paint it antique gold that will be in the instructions but if you're following along with the video and painting it that way then um, just go in and while you're painting your antique gold just paint that book antique gold Just a little dabble do you here. Okay, that's all we need to do to brighten those stars up. Just a little bit on the tops of them. Okay, we want to do our stripes now. So we're going to do the stripes here and the stripes here. And I'm also going to put a, um, a red and a blue and a gold stripe on um, this white book. Okay, so we're going to use our Tuscan red. I'm using my one round. Okay, we'll start right here. And I'm not going to worry about how many stripes I have on here and how many um, stars. So we're just going to paint our stripes on here. I'm sure they're not they're not all going to be the exact distance apart so again I'm not going to worry about it I see my flag is not straight so I'm going to come back and straighten that white line there a little bit more paint I can go in and fatten up these red lines to make them a little bit fatter if I want to. I'm going to put a second quick coat on here. Oops, kind of got a little wobbly there. Try not to go outside my blue either. Ooh, that one got really fat. So I'm laying my brush almost flat as I come down this, you know, creating the stripe. And then as I get to the end where I want to stop, I come up on the tip. Okay, and I'll come I'll come back in and fix that white line there. So on our star here, or our star on our bow tie here, we've got uh, an opening here. So we're gonna have like our stripes are going to follow the shape of this bow tie. And then we'll have some that are in here. You can see a little piece of one there. Need a little bit of water in my brush. My little fan is just trying my paint out too fast. I thought it, I'd like to have it aimed at me because I'm really hot today, but. to turn that. Now I'm not laying my brush down completely flat here. I'm kind of staying up a little bit on the tip of it. And, you know, just letting it 
letting the paint come off trying not to give a whole lot of pressure now on this um, part of the bow tie um, we can just make our stripes go this direction and I think I'm going to need a little piece of a stripe here Okay, so I want to repeat that on there you can see my pencil lines through there I don't really want to see them but nothing I can do about that because I painted over them Pencil line is going to make the stripes on here look darker because of that lid that's underneath it. Oh, kind of messed that one up. All right, so over here on the book, we're going to create a, um, a little bit of water on my brush here. We're going to create a red stripe. Beside that one with a gold stripe. And then we'll go beside that one with a blue stripe. And you'll have to repeat. All of the stripes so that they you know show up nicely let me fix my white stripe over here Probably take a couple of coats to fix it these stripes on this book here real quick. Red. Antique gold. And true blue. Okay, now the stripes on this book Use warm white. On the red book. We'll just go ahead and get all of our stripes done at one time. We've still got this green color that we have to carry in somewhere. So I may add a green stripe on there with the red and the gold and the blue. stripe is way too far away. So I'm going to ignore that line that I drew on there. And I think I might put some uh, green stripes on this one. First I'm going to get all my white ones on here. and make them pretty close to the same distance apart and the th same thickness I drew some on here but they weren't even close to being the same distance on here you can do as few or as many as you would like And that got to be a little fat one there. Okay, let me get, grab some green. That's Hauser Medium Green. We need this carried in here in a couple of places, so I'm going to have to figure out where else I can put this green. So we'll make a green stripe here. 
little green stripe here. And then on the gold book, two green stripes at the top, two green stripes at the bottom. that and then on the green book oops a little bit of green on my bear okay and then on the green book let's make our stripes So maybe we'll do two blue ones, and then we'll put a black one in the middle. So I'll let me get some fresh black out here. green down here on the bottom. I don't think I did. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to erase all of my graphite lines uh, around the flag and the books. And we're going to come in and shade all of this stuff. going to go very, very quickly. Way too much water in my brush there. Okay, touching up my flag there. Okay, for our um, flag post here, I want to just streak very lightly a little bit of burlap down on that. And that's, that's all we're going to do to that. That's it. Okay, so we're going to start by shading our flag. And I want to take a um, very sheer wash, although we're going to float, of... Um, True blue, so I want to work it into my brush till it gets nice and and sheer like that. And we're going to shade next to the post here, and next to the the blue area. You can't see that very well. I'll make it a little bit darker for you. I don't I don't want it to be super duper dark, but I do need you to see it. So right there and right there. And we'll come back and do underneath, right there. Okay, now on the uh, bow tie, we're going to shade on the inside here. A little bit darker so you can see it. We're going to shade around the knot. Shade along the back edge back here. And we'll shade on the center knot. A little bit more. Now you can go down to a much smaller brush than what I've got here. You could go down to a six curve flat, would be good, or a um, quarter eighth inch um, angle brush 
whatever you're using. Just go to a smaller brush. Go along this edge here. I want to widen this a little bit here. Okay, I'm going to repeat that. That knot's going to be the probably the most difficult thing on that bow tie. Also take this blue. I think I will definitely go down to a smaller brush here. Let me find my six curve flat. You can use a, a small flat, a small chisel, something really small for this white book over here. We're going to do the, the blue on the white book. So we're going to go down this edge of it. I'm going to let that dry, then I'm going to do the opposite edge as well. Okay. I'm going to add a teeny tiny bit of soft black, just the tiniest little bits. I really feel like this needs to be darker. I want you to sneak up on it with that soft black. I don't want you. Gives it a little bit more depth, I think. So, just a teeny tiny little dot of soft black is all I added in there, in that true blue. too much water there. Way, 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 way too much water. Alright, I want to put a little bit in on the book. Get the soft black mixed in with it. I think that I'm up on the very tippy toe, almost lining the side of this book. Nope, you weren't even on camera for that. And then we're going to go down this side. This is up on the tippy tippy toe. Almost doesn't look like a white book anymore. We'll add a white highlight down the center, I think. Make it still look like it's a little bit of a white book. I'm trying to decide if I want to shade on that back edge back there or not. We're going to highlight on this edge and down here. Let's move over to the shading of the, um, the blue areas. So we're going to take our soft black and a little bit of blue. But this time it will mostly be soft black. And we'll shade inside here. of the flag here. I'm going to shade along the outside edge of the bow tie. And bring that in a little bit. Shade next to the knot. Alright, 
while we've got this color, we'll go over to our book and do it. Your brush, a little bit of water, a little bit of paint, blend it, go down the other side. Okay, we'll probably come back and repeat that. I want that to be a little bit wider. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and repeat the float on the book, and then we're going to move on to adding highlights on the bow tie while this one dries. Probably right, weren't on camera for that at all, were you? Alright, let's add a highlight here on our bow tie and our flag. I'm going to use Snow White. And I'm going to come along this top edge here. And along this edge. This inside edge here. You could use a liner brush and just line these white sections if you want. <clears throat> and then a little bit across there. I think I might do a little bit of shading on that one. I'm not sure. Or highlighting on it, not shading. So on the flag, we'll go along the outer edge here. You won't, it won't show up a whole lot on the flag because, you know, our stripes are white, but it's going to show up a little bit. liking this. It's too wide right there on that knot. So I'm going to dampen it and remove it. <clears throat> I think I'll do the um, the knot. I want it to look like one big knot here. highlight the whole thing like that. Okay, on the blue, we're going to take our true blue and add just a tiny little bit of white to it. A little bit lighter color here. And we'll go on the inside edge here. And on the outside edge here. And a little bit here. <clears throat> okay, and then we can put just a little bit of the, this across the blue up here. You'd probably like to be on camera there, wouldn't you? Just a little, just to highlight blue up there. Okay, we can also take this lighter blue, this blue and white mix, and we can highlight the top edge here of our book. Ok, 
Okay, but for down here, I think I'm going to shade it. So I'm going to mix the, the um, soft black. And the true blue. Maybe if I can get my paint to work here. Do the sides, you let the sides dry, and then you'll go along the bottom. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, so that is our bow tie and our flag done. Our blue book is just about done. I think I might add another highlight on here. I'm thinking about doing a back to back float down the center here with some white, so let me try that and see if I'm going to like it. Let's give our bow a little bit more shine here. Do it on this one. I repeat that on the blue because it is not near light enough for me. Okay, that flag looks pretty good. Now let's take a um, little float and take my white with just a, a tiny bit of blue in it and we'll put a highlight down the center of this book. <clears throat> that was a back-to-back -back float as well. So a back-to-back -back float is simply where you... Let me get some paint on my brush here. You can pre-dampen it if that makes it easier for you. But you just lay your brush flat and let the paint kind of come down. You can walk it over a little bit. Okay, and then you flip your brush over. And I like to go right next to the line, but, uh, you know, other teachers say overlap them. I do not like to overlap them. But that is definitely just a practice thing and see what you like. And then I always take my mop brush and I soften, I just go right down where I just painted that and I soften it. So, <clears throat> excuse me. <coughs> Goodness. Repeat this. And I'm going to lay some water on there first. Maybe just a touch too much water. Maybe a touch more paint. When you lay water down, you've got to have pretty much straight paint on your brush. You can't be having it watered down any. Okay, this needs to come all the way up to the edge. in my mop brush. Okay, and then I just gently mop that and I'll come over here and do this one. And my brush flat, flip it over. I like to go right up next to that one that I just put on there. I do not leave a gap in there. When you leave a gap it it you know it won't look right. So that's why some teachers say to overlap it. It is definitely something that you just have to practice with. And then I'm up, 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 right now. Got a nice little shine on that book now. Let's put a highlight on this book down here with white. And I'm just going to take my liner brush and go straight down it. Okay. Alright, let's shade these other books here. I'm going to take my six curve flat. And I'm going to 
shade the um, yellow one with some soft black. Just need a tiny bit on my brush here. Get some more water. <coughs> I don't want the paint to get very far over on my brush. This is such a, a small book here. We can't see a whole lot of it. So we'll go down both edges. And this is a very tight float here. Go a little bit behind this bear. Highlight with some cad yellow. So we'll highlight up here on this edge. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight down here on this edge. Highlight down the book itself with this cad yellow, and I just wipe the excess paint off and pick up a little bit of white, and we'll brighten. Just try to stay off of your bear. Okay, and that's all there is to the yellow one. The, the white one is done. <clears throat> Although it kind of looks like a blue book. The blue one is done. The yellow one's done. So we've got the red one and the green one left to do. So the red one I am going to float a shading with um, some uh, Tuscan red and soft black mixed together. This will give you a nice rich. Put some more soft black out. <clears throat> okay. I've probably got a brush too large for this book. I'm going to wipe my paint off and pick up some a little bit tighter on the edge. Go down one side. It's not really as dark as what I'd like it to be. Go down the other side. Let that dry. Turn my white stripes pink. So I'm going to remove the paint out of the center. I'd like for my white stripes to remain white. <clears throat> okay, on the um, green one down here, we're going to take our Hauser uh, medium green and some soft black and blend that together. Shade along each side of our book. A little bit more soft black, I think. That was too hard of a line there. And I'm just going to remove a little bit of that and try that again. Um, I think I'm going to get some lamp black out. 
soft black has a little bit too much brown in it, so I'm going to try and make a black green with my um, Hauser medium green in that black. And that will just make a, a much nicer shading color. Okay, so that was Hauser medium green and lamp black. Just blend them together to where it looks like a kind of a black green color. dry. I'm going to go back up here to my red one. And I think I'll do the same thing. I'll mix the black and the red together. Because that will give us like a cranberry wine. We'll take that brown out of it. On the bottom, and we're going to highlight with our Snow White. Let's let that one dry. It's not quite dry. So down here on our green one, I'm going to mix a little bit of white and Hauser medium green together. And then we'll just highlight it back to back. Float here. Mop it. Gently soften it. Our red book, we're just going to go straight snow white. And a back to back float. white on the green one. Mop it. Soften it down. Okay, those books look pretty, pretty good. A little bit of red outside here. i clean that up. If I had a solid background, I wouldn't worry about it because I could just come back and touch up the background. But I don't have a solid background, so I have to be careful not to get anything on the um, background. Okay, I think I want to add a little bit of pink on the cheeks. So I, this, uh, this little dome brush that we used earlier to stipple the body, <clears throat> I'm using it dry again. I haven't used it for a while, so it's uh, been plenty dry. I put some Tuscan Red on here. Now I'm removing as much paint as I can into a dry paper towel and then I'm just going to go in here and add some color right here I'm just gently rubbing in a circle letting a little bit of the paint come off of this brush I'm rubbing a little bit harder as I can tell my paint is um, coming out, you know, like there isn't hardly any paint left in the brush. And we'll just rosy up his cheekies there. I think that looks pretty good on him. Alright, we're ready to move on to the little 
urn here. Now you can put, you know, if you want to leave the stripes off and put titles on your books, you can do that. You don't have to, um, you know, just leave them like that. But I, the whole theme of this is, you know, the American flag, red, white, and blue. And um, if you live in a different country, you can, you know, of course, do it the theme of your country. The uh, flags and the colors and, you know, all of that. So now we're going to move on to this little pot here. I'm going to get my little one round brush. And I want to add some um, little subtle details onto that pot. And I think I'm going to do it with green. I think that was my initial color I wanted to do. So I'm going to water down or thin down a little bit of this green paint. I just want to get it kind of thin. Little transparent. I want to make this little. Oops, I have to be on camera probably. I want to make this little crock have some little um, faux, some you know, like worn paint details. So this is where stroke work comes in. I'm not sure what my pattern looks like here draw it on my other one so I'm gonna do a one coming up like this and then do some coming up like this and then I want to put I'm sure you probably weren't on camera for any of that I'm gonna put a um, Green line around the bottom here. And, um, I think I'll do one at the top, although I'm not sure how much of the top one we will see when we're done. But I'm going to put one across here. This is with the Hauser medium green. It's it's thinned down with water, so it's pretty transparent. Now we're going to shade this with um, burnt umber. All right, hopefully I'm going to keep you on camera here. So we're just going to float a little bit of burnt umber. I'm keeping it also a little bit sheer. You know me, if you've painted with me long enough, I like to start out with light sheer coats. Keep it soft. I'd rather come back and add. And that's really, really light. So I know it's going to have to be a lot darker. Okay, I'm going to go along the outer edge out here. Okay, I'll do the outer edge over here. Probably won't see a whole lot of this upper edge. Let me finish going around this bear's foot here. Okay, I want to create like a lip here. A little bit of a lip there. Let me go back around the bottom because didn't get near dark enough for me. And just in case we see any of the inside of this, or see any of the edge of this, we'll make the inside of it burnt umber as well. This part probably won't be on the pattern, but I'll show it to you and, and you can be the judge of it. I need to darken right here next to the bear's foot. More water. More paint. I'm going to take 
that little stippling brush. I know it's, I just washed it out, but I'm going to take some soft black. And I want a tiny little bit of that on my brush. So I got a lot, so I'm going to go wipe it off on my paper towel. And I just want to stipple some of this all over. And I'm going to stipple some burnt umber. It's very delicate stippling here. kind of wanted that pot to look older than what it is. And I think I'm going to have to shade along the bottom of it a little bit more. I think I'll use soft black this time. So we're going to go with burnt umber first. And then we will come back and darken it with soft black. Also put a little bit of this underneath our rim here, and inside. Now our flower pot's going to have to have a highlight on it, so I'm going to take my white. I think instead of having this all shaded out here. Light it. Kind of walk it in. I also want to do this edge here. And the upper edge here. And I mostly want this. Satellite there. Top edge, I think. This is Snow White. Okay, I think that's good for a highlight for a little pot. Probably should have gave it a little bit flatter bottom, but I think it'll be all right. Okay, he's looking really cute. We're almost done with this project. A few more things to do. We're going to start on our flowers now. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to go back to this stone brush. I know it's wet because I just cleaned it out. That's okay. For what we're going to use it for, it's all right if it's a little damp. So we're going to take our Hauser Medium Green and a little bit of black. And we're going to mix it together to make like a dark green, like a black green. And I'm going to tap some of that off on my paper towel. And we're going to go in here. And we're just going to tap some green stuff back in here. It can come up over our bear. It's all right. This is just background stuff. It's the Hauser medium green and some lamp black. Kind of making a black green back in here. Now we're just going to go into some Hauser Medium Green, tap some of that in here. And then I'll get a little tiny bit of antique gold, 
That might be a little bit too much. Tap that off. And we'll tap some of this in here. Okay, I think a little bit more of the black green maybe. The house are with the um I'm gonna cover this edge a little bit. How's our medium green? And then a tiny little bit of, ooh, that's a lot <laughs> of the antique gold. Okay, just some little fluff in that um, little flower pot thing that we made there. Okay, we're going to add our flowers in, and we've got some shading to do underneath here, and we'll be done with this project. Now, I just want to create the kind of look of a rose. It's not really a rose, so it's it's going to be ve very, very um, impressionistic. It's not going to be very literal at all, so if you want to make more literal roses, you can. So, I've got on my brush, let me get some water on my palette, because I know I'm going to need it. I've got um, Tuscan Red and a little bit of white and it makes a very bright pink let me tell you. Bright, 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 bright. I mean that just has the tiniest bit of white in with that Tuscan Red and look how pink that is. Alright, now you're going to come in here and determine where you want to put some roses. So I want a pretty big one right here. So we're just going to paint a circle in. These are definitely not you know, going to be maybe a little one down here, let's put a big one here, a big one right here. I'm gonna try and cover up that graphite line I put on there because otherwise Okay, you can just put as many roses in here as you want. I'm going to make this one a little bit bigger. Or as few as you want. So it's completely up to you. So there are our roses. Well, the starting of our roses. It's my turntable, so it won't spin on me. Okay, so now we're going to take our Tuscan Red. And we're going to mix a little bit of lamp black with it. A little bit more. I've got too much water in my brush here. Ooh, that's a little bit too much black. I don't want my roses to turn black. But we want a dark kind of wine color. Okay, so we're going to determine where, like, the opening or the center of our roses are. So that one's going to be there. These little buds up here, we don't have to get too technical with them. So we're going to create our little opening with this color. camera there. So we are just creating some centers. Oop, too much water on my brush here.
Okay, so we've created our center. So now we know where the base of our flowers are going to go. So we're going to float in the bases. This one I'm going to put on this side. This is that same mix. That red with a little bit of black. I'm just going to find the base of our flowers. And mix up a little bit more here. This is just some easy peasy little little flowers here. They don't even have to be roses. They can be whatever flower you want them to be. I'm calling them roses, but and you don't have to do anything more than shade and highlight them if that's if that's what you want. If you just want to shade them and then highlight them with some white you can do that so this is what they would look like if you just shade and highlight them you would, you would go around the, the cup and then go along the opposite edge and create a little highlight on them but that's not what I want to do I want to create uh, uh, sort of the look of a rose <laughs> So I'm going to take my one round and get some white paint and actually I think I have warm white so either, either will do warm white and I'm going to go around this and then I'm just going to come in here and create some like little strokes on here. Oops, I'd probably like to be on camera wouldn't you? Go out past your flower a little bit. This is very, very impressionistic. It's not literal. It's loose. Very, very loose. Need some fresh paint here. Just stroking, just, you know, be messy. I do not have to be neat with this. The messier the better. Messier the better. I like for my strokes to come out past I don't like them to be contained. Okay, so then you've got some nice little sort of roses in there. Let me wide angle out. All we've got left to do is our shading down here. Now, weren't those the fastest, funnest flowers ever? Just fun, fun, fun. And it, it, and it goes with all of our our look here with our stripes and, and everything it just it just all goes very very well together all right we're gonna shade underneath here now if I can find a place on my palette that I can actually work with some paint I'm gonna use some lamp black and I've got a flat brush here because I just like when I'm doing floating underneath things like this 
I just prefer a, f a flat brush. Paint. Whoa, that was a lot of paint. So we want to go around everything. With some light black. I've got way too much water in my brush. Creep, create our little shadows back underneath there. Try and stay off my book. Go around our bear. Now I need water. Sometimes it's just a vicious circle. Pull it out. It'll be kind of messy with it. I want some dark back in here. Definitely need water. Just some little shadows. some more paint back up in here. We need these dark areas to be dark. And this is the last thing we'll be doing here. If I put paint to it right now, it's just going to remove it. Alrighty. That looks pretty good. I like that. Okay. One last thing I want to do. I think we need to uh, either shade along here or we need to add a stripe on there. And I think I'm just going to shade it. So I don't want to go lamp black. So I'm going to take some true blue and mix a little bit of lamp black with it. And I think in this particular instance I will pre-dampen. It's a big area. So I'll take my blue and mix some black with it. Come right along this edge and just darken that a little bit. Stay off of your white. If you don't feel like you can do this, like I'm not doing it, without getting on your white, then um, get your tape back out. Tape that off. brush out. Ooh, fling it around. Put some water on this edge. All the way down. Got white paint up there. Get my blue and my black. Whoa, that's a lot of paint. Get too much paint, just go wipe it off and reload. 
I'm not doing a very good job of staying off my white here, as you can tell. I should have got my tape out. Sometimes larger areas are a little bit more, require a little bit more help. Well, that's just a mess right there. So I'll just come back to that and do it. I need to let it get good and dry before I do. But I think we can pretty much, except for me touching up that edge there, we can call this a very done project. I'm very happy with how it turned out. Let me wide angle you out here. easel so you can see it better. And I think that this little guy turned out cute as a button. Speaking of buttons, you could put buttons down. Button for a belly button. I just think he turned out so cute. My first bear that I've ever painted and I just simply love how it turned out. So I hope that you enjoyed painting this with me and had as much fun as I did. And uh, just create it and make it your own for wherever you are and just have fun with it because I sure did. All right, Thank you so much for painting with me and I'll see you guys on the next one.